Okay, so I gotta record this video really quick because I'm about to head out to a play uh, for my birthday. So, um, my birthday is coming up here in a couple of days and my wife is taking me out to a play, but I wanna make this video for you guys so we can uh, uh, get some more knowledge spread out there in the Gaiaverse. So, um, this is what I made last night. I posted some images on the Gaia Discord, uh, but this is like some rocky mountain, rocky peak kind of stuff that I uh, put together real quick, just as like a trial and error. Uh, just figuring out new ways to use the Rocky node than what I normally had been using it for, for like Rocky Plains. It's still a good way to use it, but I wanted to make some really like Rocky Peak mountains. So I just wanted to show you the final product here. I'm going to actually go through and do a full breakdown for you guys on uh, maybe not the texturing uh, because that is all of this and that's a lot to go over so I'm just gonna do the um, the breakdown of the landscape but real quick I will mention in the uh, the texturing here this rock texture I created is created by uh, a slope mask um, a rock map and then another rock map with a displace and two sat maps so this one and uh, this one and they're using I believe they're using the same sat map color uh, yeah, so 172 is what I was using, and I really liked the way that rock texture was popping out. So um, I can go into, I'll, I'll save this scene, uh, and I'll probably upload it to the Discord, uh, either my Discord or Gaia's Discord or both, uh, if I ever get the time. But uh, for now, let's just go ahead and do the breakdown uh, with the, for the landscape. So I'm going to... Uh, We'll cancel that. My cat's right outside the door and she is wanting to come in here and I'm just like, no, I don't think so. So we'll do no on that and no on that. We'll just do a new one, a new blank scene. And what's nice about this process is that it takes very few nodes uh, to actually put together and you get some pretty good results afterwards. Additionally, with this process, you can add however many selections to your landscape as you want more height, maybe a custom mask. But what you don't want to do is use a slope mask. Uh, slope just in general is not very good for height maps, I'm trying to place height maps because of how the slope works. Um, I often discourage people to do that because it just won't turn out proper. Um, so what you want to do is just use a custom mask and a height and then try to finesse it with other filters. Uh, but for the time being, I'll just show you the basic concept of what I had set up in that other scene. And that way you can at least grasp the concept and then you can add however many nodes you want to it after that. So what I used to begin with was range. And the reason why I used range is because it gives us, it already gives us a pretty rocky looking uh, range of mountains. And you can adjust specific things here if you want for additional uh, definitions, like more more rocky patterns appearing or even less. You can have a, a very flat looking range and then you can add the rocks on top of it. Uh, whichever floats your boat doesn't really matter, um, but you just want something that works well with rocks. And I found that range does a really good job with that. Additionally, you can use, um, instead of range, you can use uh, like plates. Place is a good one to use as well. Um, it gives you uh, these slopes that you can work with. And also, uh, hold on a sec. My um, slump would work really well. Right there, slump. Uh, which one was it here? I'm I, Ridge, there we go. I, I barely woke up. Um, and, and I'm still trying to get my brain in order here. Uh, but you see we have a really like crusty rock look here and some really nice flat surfaces that you can add rocks to. You can create some really cool stuff with that. But for the time being, I'm just gonna stick with range. And what I'm gonna look for is one that has a lot of height variation and you can adjust the height here. My mouse is being dumb, I don't know why. But that's not gonna be good enough. What you want is one that has a lot of variation in the fractal noise itself. So let's just kind of skim through. Like this one's good. It has this range right here and comes down over here. That's good, but it's not very tall. Uh, but that's kind of like what we're looking for. This one has a good amount of range to it. 
So I, I think I'll stick with this one. Um, and this also works really well because we have a slope right here, like a gradient. And if you wanted to add a linear gradient and have like the range appear on one side and it slopes upward, uh, that would look really good too. Um, but again, the choice is yours. You don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. You just kind of got to figure out whichever way you want your landscape to look. But this, I feel, looks really good. So I'm going to stick with this. Now what I used in the other scene is a height selection, but I also uh, can suggest that you use the mask selection or the mask node and just draw in the selection here on this range um, and then use a height to kind of decide where you want the rocks to appear in that mask selection. So you're like using a mask for a mask. And I've done that in other videos, so I'm not going to go into that here because that would take a little bit too much time to kind of showcase. Um, but I've done that in other videos and you can go back and watch my other videos and uh, figure out where I used it. But maybe in the future when I get a little more time, I'll go into that concept for, with you guys a little bit more. Um, I often do it with a slope selection for height. So uh, you can use the height mask as a mask input to the slope, if that makes sense, for this, the mask input for the slope node. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to use a height. So let's bring in a height. And we'll also bring in uh, Rocky. And this is a very important process here. This is where you're going to get uh, either a good or bad look, um, or just a different look. Could be good still, um, but what I want is extreme rockiness. So I'm going to reduce the size all the way, and then I'm going to increase the small rocks all the way. And you'll notice here we still have these big kind of uh, plates right here of rock, we're going to break those up with more breakage. And I used 100% breakage last time, um, but I found that if you do that, we just don't have enough size variation when you do that. So I am not going to go as high. I just want those larger chunks to be broken up a bit more. These right here are fine. Those will work just fine. Um, and then you can increase the roughness a bit too, um, and that'll just vary the, the rock surface a bit. Um, we're not going to use any clustering and no erosion. We're just going to leave it like this. Um, now, uh, at least for the rocky node, uh, for the time being, we might have to come back to it. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take a displace node and we're going to displace these rocks. And we're going to displace them quite a bit. Uh, we're going to use the rugged version. And you'll notice that when we do that, we're getting this stretching in the rocks. I wish my mouse would just not do that. We see these stretching. Um, and that's what we want because that's what's going to create these jagged rocks jutting out. Additionally, we're also going to add a fold. And that will give us even more stretch, as you can see here. And we, we want that because the displace node, uh, it, it's good for giving us that initial displacement, but it's not very good at being controlled at high values. So I'm going to increase this to 15. Um, that's about what I used in the other one. You can see the more stretching we have here. But the folding will give us more stretching without warping or displacing the actual rocks underneath uh, to a degree where we lose kind of the, the rock fidelity. Um, what we're going to want to do is play with the angle here till we find one that we like. Uh, where you're not going to get a lot of variation here in the middle. It's going to almost be on the edges. So in the other one, I just left it at zero and just called that good. Uh, but you can play around with these other features here as well, um, the, the fold settings. I just left them by default, and this worked really well. So I'm just going to keep it like this. All right, now that we have our rocks set up, we want to get our range and our, come on, mouse, our range and our rocks together. And we're going to do that with a combined node. And we're going to do it with a uh, with a, a method set to embed. And you can see here, we now have, that's our range, and that's our rocks there. You can see here, after we increase the ratio, we now have the rocks being embedded everywhere. Um, and this looks can look really good for other purposes, but this isn't what I want. And this is where the height comes in. Uh, we already have it right here. So now we have our height node. Let's go ahead and put that in. And uh, we're going to attach that to the range. 
So I'll move this over here so you can see what's happening. There we go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select just the top parts of the landscape. Just slowly but surely inch it down until you are able to select the areas you want to select. I also recommend keeping a fall off kind of high um, because if you don't, you're going to get a very flat kind of terraced area in your landscape and you don't want that. So um, you, want a, you want a good fall off so it blends nicely. So that's our range and those are our rocks. And you can, even if we increase the resolution, you'll notice that the rocks aren't necessarily coming through all that well. And that's because they lost a lot of their height, a lot of their variation when we combine them with the embed option. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the rock node and we're going to enable equalization on it in the post process. And you'll see we get a really ridiculous look and it doesn't look good with the combine right here. You see it actually decimates the entire landscape. So what we're going to do is we're going to pin the combine node by selecting it and hitting F on the keyboard. Or you can right click and click on pin. And then we're going to go back to Rocky and then we're going to decrease the influence in the post process. I got to move my recording window here. Uh, decrease this influence until we get a look that we're wanting. As you see, it's coming in a little bit more. Just keep reducing it. In the other, um, in the other project, I had to reduce it all the way down to three percent. So uh, I imagine I'll have to do about the same thing here. But we'll. Uh, I'll just show you as we inch it down. You can see the folding working on the rocks themselves. Um, so now we're just going to start taking it down about one or two percent from this point uh, until we find what we want. So 7%, 6% isn't it, 5% didn't look like it did much either. So we're going to be kind of stuck with um, this look here that we probably don't necessarily want. Let's see if it's updating because I didn't see a whole lot of changes. This displace isn't building. That's probably why. No, it was. Okay. Um, so let's just keep reducing the rock influence. Maybe we can get a bit. There we go. Yeah. All right. Now that's looking a little better. So let's go back to the rock. Let's increase this to three. Uh, you want you want to have a little bit more rock there than what you think you need, because um, when you start eroding it, the erosion is going to take away the rock, um, and that's not uh, that's not going to be good for your end result uh, if you don't have enough rock there. So I think three percent is good because that gives us a little bit more than two percent, obviously. But now when we erode it, we'll have more rocky features there. And now you can see it kind of coming together here on this range. Um, it's going to be extremely rocky. Now at this point, um, there's a couple other things you can do. <clears throat> you can either continue processing the landscape how you normally would at this point, or you can be a bit more selective and add more features um, in certain areas by adding a transform to the rocky node. And there are some plus and minuses to that. The plus side is, is that you'll be able to reduce the rock size so you can have even smaller rocks and pocket them in different areas with the transform node. But you'll also be left with uh, the edges of the rock fractal, uh, the rock node, in a square extent. So you're, you're, you'll have, if you're not trying to finesse the rocks into certain locations, you're going to end up having like a very square looking rock patch. Um, that's the downside to how things are currently operating in Gaia when it comes to the transform node. So I don't use it too often. Um, I use it to move mountain peaks to different areas that works really well, but they usually typically have to have a zero edge. So if you use the rock node, attach it to like a radial gradient as a mask and have a very shallow fall off for the rocks and then lower the height of them that might work but um <clears throat> that's all up to you to really just to decide i'm just showing the process on how to get the rocks in these locations properly um, and then maybe in the future i'll go ahead and do a bit more videos on uh that specific process so 
At this point, you can add erosion. You can add what I think would be a good idea is adding a breaker. So you can even break these up even more. I didn't do that in the last one, but um, now that I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and add a breaker here and see what we get. And remember, breaker is one of those nodes where if you increase the build resolution, you're going, you're going to see these lines, these breakups a lot more um, than if you were to keep it at low resolution. So even changing the duration and river length and stuff like that now might make it look a little bit crazy later on. And then you can add the breaker to the entire landscape, like what's happening here, or you can add it specifically to the height where the rocks are. And that's what I recommend. And then uh, you'll break up these rocks. You're not noticing much of a difference right now. If you look like in this area, there's a slight change. Uh, it's really hard to see. Um, but at this point, what you want to do is just increase either the erosion power or the duration. I think the duration increasing that might work really well. And now that, that'll add kind of fissures in the rock. We'll add quite a bit here. If we increase the resolution, we'll see it a lot better. Uh, then if we didn't, but we'll, uh, we'll keep it. We might, we might want to go back and erode the rocks first and then add the breaker, but you can see it being added here. Um, now I used wizard in the last one. Uh, you can use whatever erosion you want, but I'm going to go ahead and use wizard. And you can see here. Uh, just the basic erosion works really well. You, know, you don't have to add more than than that, in my opinion, because uh, now you got these nice rocky jutting rocks, and some of them actually come out at different angles too, which is nice. Um, like this one, you can see the rock kind of coming out like this, but it's kind of going up that way. Uh, so that's pretty good. Same thing with his right here. Uh, you can add a lot more erosion than this too if you wanted. You can also add some... Uh, some terracing if you wanted. So you can do a small amount of terracing that bands across and um, on the rocks. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just giving you examples of what you can do uh, because this is more of a process of how to build them. So come on mouse, there we go. All right, so let's continue moving forward here. We got a nice mountain shape and depending on whether or not my wife gets home, I might actually go through the texturing process with you. Um, but I'm going to keep this erosion like this for now because I think, well, you know what? Actually, we'll do a fast erosion and then down here we'll do mild erosion. Because I'll just add another small amount of erosion on top. There we go. And then you can also apply this inversely. So instead of applying it even up here on the rocks, which isn't a bad idea, you can take an invert node from the height and attach it to the mask input for the wizard. That would totally be fine too. But as you can see here, these erosion options, they keep a good amount of the rock detail. So you don't have to worry about the, the typical erosion pattern where all the rocks just kind of get eroded and um, there's not a whole lot of rock detail there left. Uh, this is, uh, th that's why I like this, pro this process or like this method, because you can do a lot of eroding and you'll, you'll still be left with a lot of rock. Let's add a thermal erosion. And now what this will do is this will give us uh, this talus um, or this scree. You can call it talus or scree. They're technically both different, um, but um, it'll, it'll fill in those gaps where the rocks are and it'll just make it look a lot better in my opinion. All right, so we're about 20 minutes in and she won't be home until four o'clock, she said. So I got a half hour. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do the texturing for you guys anyways. Um, so like all of my texturing uh, processes, I usually typically start with one texture uh, node. And the reason why is it gives me a base to work with. And this base can last all the way till the end of my texturing process. Um, or it can be covered up really quickly. And if it gets covered up, that's fine because it's just a base. It's like putting a shirt on and then covering it up with a coat. Um, and it depends on, you know, the coat, whatever. But that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm just going to add a texture node. I'm not going to change anything about it. I'm just going to keep a simple base texture node. We're going to pin this as an underlay. And now we can see what we have going on. And you can see this gives us a really good rocky look. Um, but... What I don't want is a rock base. I want a dirt and grass base. And the reason why is because um, 
as we are working uh, through our texture processing, I'm going to add even more rock to where the rock should be. So I want there to be grass and dirt in places where I need them now. Um, you can also work from the ground up. So technically, uh, you would start with a rock base and then cover it up with rock or dirt and grass. And that makes a lot more sense naturally. Um, but since I'm going to process things inversely, I'm going to go ahead and start with rock and grass or grass and dirt now, and then I'm going to cover up rock where it needs to be, and then it blends nicely together, and you guys will see that. Um, I don't know how many of you have watched all my texturing videos, but the, the texturing typically turns out half decent, in my opinion. I'm not like an expert at texturing, but I do like it. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do in Gaia. Now, this is a good base. You can see here we have uh, a green. This is still technically like a mossy rock texture, um, but it gives us a nice green color, with dirt and this li these little speckles of rock, which is really nice. And also up here on the scree, it looks really like uh, a lot of dirt and mud and stuff like that. So that's that's good. That's what that's what I'm looking for in a base. If you wanted to, you can change the library to green. I don't find that a lot of the green sat maps in here are. Well, this one's actually really good. So of course, um, guy is going to make me sound like an idiot, but. Um, which one is this, by the way? Hold on a sec. It's probably down here a bit more. I've, in any case, I don't find a lot of... Oh, it's this one right here. I don't find a lot of the green sat maps work really well for massive scale uh, applications like this. You might find some that look half decent, like this one might work really well. Now, see that that's... It's just too green, so you have to add more nodes after this to reduce the amount of green there is. It's kind of like an unnatural green amount. Um, something maybe like this might work really well. Yeah, see that works really well for this too. A um, little bit too much in the flow areas uh, in my opinion, but that could work really well. We might just stick with this for now uh, and come back to this one uh, later. You can always change this later. All right, so the next step is going to be a slope. And this slope well, its main purpose is to select um, all of the steep areas on the thermal. You can see here. <clears throat> Let me select that and increase this all the way to 90 degrees. And then we increase this somewhere around the 70% range. You can see how it's selecting all those rocks. We're going to reduce this one, actually. Typically, 72 is... 70 and between 70 and 80 is typically a good range uh, for this process from what I've found while I've been testing with it. Um, we might actually just go back up to 70. I got a little bit too much down here. 72. Oh, that was 80. Don't want that. Yeah, 72 I think is still good. And then we're going to add from the thermal a rock map and that rock map uh, will be masked out using this slope. Come on, there we go. And now we're only applying that rock mask where the slope is. And we're going to have to play around with this rock map to find the correct coverage and density. So uh, we're going to want to play around with that. You can also play around with the invert here if you want. I don't like the invert for this process anyways because it makes the rocks um, they don't look rocky in enough when you uh, turn off the invert here. It, it creates the rocks more jutting out uh, horizontally rather than making it look like they're also coming out uh, vertically as well. Or, sorry, reverse that. They look like they're coming out vertically more than horizontally. And I don't like that personally. Uh, so let's go ahead and add a uh, sat map to this. And we're going to find a rock color that matches maybe something like this color or we can even get away with like this color we just want one that sticks out quite a bit we can use a darker rock we can use a lighter rock we can start with a dark rock if you want so let's combine those together and i'm just going to set this up how i normally do and i gotta move my recording thing again i'm just gonna put it right here i suppose and we're going to mask in that color with the slope. And we're going to turn the blending all the way up. There we go. 
So now you can see here we have these dark rocks kind of jutting out. And we get these really cool flat areas too uh, up here as well. So they're not just you know sharp rocks sticking out everywhere. We have flatter areas that you can walk around in and, and whatnot, little gullies and whatnot. Um, now the downside to using just a single sat map and or a single rock map is everything still kind of uniform looking. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and change this to a lighter color. I, I like that dark color, um, but I'm going to choose a lighter one. I think that might be too light. Okay, I can look through sat maps all day, and I have. I've on my days off before I had my second kid, I would sit here in Gaia and play with sat maps and different things like almost all day, and it was a fun time. So that that looks half decent with the sat map that we have our base, uh, but it blends in just a bit too much. We don't have enough variation there, so we're just going to keep looking until we find one that. That one would probably blend a little bit too much. These, I find that these right here, like these weird sat maps, actually look really good for granite rock. Uh, something like that. Um, it's a little bit too patchy, so we could probably reduce the patches. Um, but I find that those look, work really well for like large granite slabs. Uh, well, we'll look at just a few more here, and then we'll decide on one. I've got some time to kill. These blue ones you think would look terrible uh, for rock, but they actually don't. They look really good. Um, they have like this gray blue hue uh, for rock. Uh, they're actually really good. I like these too. I think these look really good. I like that one quite a bit. Uh, we're actually going to add another sat map to this, to these rocks with another rock map. So we can use this one as like a base color, and I think that looks actually really good. So we'll stick with that one for now. Uh, so let's add another rock map, and you'll notice I didn't have to change the rock map values very much there um, because it worked out really well for default values. But we're going to use another rock map, use the same slope, and we're going to change these values a bit. We're going to either increase or decrease. We're going to decrease the coverage and increase the density. Um, and the values there are arbitrary. It's just enough to change it around, but uh, the reason why is because we're going to add a displacement to this. So we're going to displace this rock mask selection. And since it's being applied based on that slope still, we don't have to use a mask, but if you wanted to, you can attach the slope still. And you can see that takes away a lot of the smaller rocks that were present after the displacement. So um, again, you can do that if you want. It's not required, but it does clean it up a bit. And we're going to, again, use the rugged method here. And we're going to increase the strength quite a bit. And now what that's going to do is it's going to warp that rock mask into different locations of the rock. Um, and it'll give us some variation because we want lots of variation. Um, and you can also add a a texture map to this if you want, but I'm just going to stick with a regular sat map. There's enough detail in those that it's not really going to matter. And let's start with another darker one. Combine these together and use this slope for, uh, or no, sorry, we're going to use this displacement for the mask. And we'll increase the blend amount to 100. As you can see there, it adds uh, even more little rock uh, dark rock patches. So whereas we had that before, we now have that. And you can see we still have the underlying rock. Um, I think that might look good if we increase the resolution a bit more. Um, because that these rocks are still extremely, like, really uh, desaturated, bright white. So let's find something. That's like what we would have in Utah, or central Utah, which is okay. Um, not what I'm looking for. That, that looks that actually looks pretty sick. Um, maybe not for this specific application, but that could be a good like lava rock look if you wanted. If you can figure out a good way to make lava rock. I have some methods that we could try to make lava rock. I just haven't made videos on it yet. Um, I guess we'll stick with like this gray gray rock because then when we add the darker rock on top of it, um, it comes through really well. 
We can take this displacement and add an auto level. Uh, and it applies an auto level by default, uh, but it's not doing much in this case. So we're going to apply an equalize. And uh, that added just enough where it's not making too much of a difference, uh, but just enough of a difference. And now when we look at these two pop in between, now we have some variation in the rock a bit more than what we did before, because now we have an auto leveled displacer. All right, so that is starting to look okay. And if I'm going too fast for you guys, I apologize, um, but I do hope that you guys are catching on and, and following along. So, all right, so now we have our rocks um, at the top parts of our peak here. Um, and then we have these va uh, the valley down below. Let's add more detail to our bottom area. And we can do that in a few different ways. Um, we can do that with another sat map. We can do it with a slope selection. And I think having a slope selection and a sat map uh, or a texture map would work really well in this case. So let's go ahead and add another slope. Maybe. There we go. When I'm recording, right, my, I think my computer needs to be rebooted because when I'm recording or doing anything in Gaia, at least now, right now, it's creating problems. And we're also going to take uh, this height right here. We're going to add an invert to it. So let's invert that. And the reason why is because we are going to mask out the rocky parts here that we don't want the slope so to select because we we don't want to add any more detail to those rocks outside of what we've already done so we're going to use this invert as a mask for that slope so now when we look at the slope we're selecting everything within the, the range of this slope but not these top parts and that's what i was talking about before where you can use like a height to mask out specific areas on a slope or vice versa um, so I guess you guys did end up seeing that after all. All right, so um, we don't want that much slope selection. That's a little bit too much. I don't want it to be selecting a lot of stuff up here. Um, we're going to reduce that to maybe 30. And you can see it's still affecting this area, but that's fine because that's not where the rocks are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the thermal, and we're going to add a texture. And again, I'm just going to stick with the defaults for the texture. I'm not going to really change those around. Uh, but we are going to use this, oh, come on, this slope as the mask for the texture. So now it'll only apply to where that slope was. And now we can use a sat map. And let's choose something that's similar to what we had underneath it, but just enough to break it down. Like that, I think worked really well. And again, we'll use that slope as a selection. And we'll just increase this. And you can see that's adding a little bit more variation to our underlying set map. So that's what we had before, is what we have after. And I think that right there looks a little better. Still have a lot of dirt. But that's from this sat map, not, not necessarily this one. Um, but I think that works just fine. And now we have our, our rocks. And we also have our valley down below. Now we, additionally, we still have one more thing we need to do. As you can see here, we have like grass and plants growing in these rocks. And that's cool. Uh, that actually works in real life too, so that's actually not something that's necessarily bad. You can keep that, but we do have this thermal here and we do have the deposits from the thermal. So let's go ahead and um, attach a auto level to that. I always like using auto levels for my masks because they allow for finer control in the intensity of the mask. Uh, as you can see here, again, it applies an auto level. So this is what we would get without it. And you can see here, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, you would still see something if you were to texture that or color that, but it's not a lot. So that's why I like the auto level. And so now we get something more like this. And you'll you'll see, it'll work. We'll, we'll see some difference, but it will be a very minor difference uh, without applying an equalize to it. So we'll just start with this for now. 
and we'll see what we need after. So let's take that, attach a set map. And this one right here, 49, it chose it by default. That actually works really well uh, for what we need because they kind of match the color of the rock. So we'll just stick with that for now. Let's attach it to the auto level. And let's increase the ratio. And as you can see, it added the rock. This is the scree. Um, but again, it's a very minor effect, as you can tell. That's why I use the auto level and apply and equalize. And you'll see this really blows up. It's going to be too much. So we're going to reduce it. And now you can either reduce it in um, the blend ratio or you can reduce it in the auto level and I prefer to do it in the auto level. So we'll take this and we'll decrease it on the equalize here. And we can go quite a bit. I think that right there might work really well. There you go. So now you can see that's a bit more of a change uh, than what we had before. And now we're going to break this up a bit by going back to the set map. We're going to add some jitter. And we're also going to add some noise. Just 1% is typically enough. There we go. So now we have our scree from our rocks. It kind of gives it this dusty look. Um, and that concludes the build. Now we have our rocky peaks. And uh, we have it eroded and colored. So that works out rather well. Um, additionally, what you can do, and this is what I did in the other one, is you can take a surface attach that to the thermal and you can see here it adds this nice small so that's the before adds this little bit of detail i'm going to choose rocky and you can see here it's even a bit more detail and i'm going to apply this slope to that surface and now that will add it to just the rocks themselves make sure that was the right slope it was okay so you can see here it's a very minor effect it's not doing a whole lot because these are very steep, uh, but it's adding some additional detail. You'll see it at higher resolutions. So let's increase this to 2K. Um, I'm also going to open a can here. So uh, headphone users, if this is loud for you, I apologize. Got some uh, cream soda, Dr. Pepper. It's actually really good. It's a it's diet Dr. Pepper though. I don't uh, don't drink a whole lot of sugars. If I'm drinking soda pop, which I do rarely, um, it's going to be a diet, mostly because diabetes runs in my family. I don't want to suffer from diabetes. Uh, but you can see here, uh, at 2K, you can see it a little bit easier. So that's before and this is after. If you look in these ridges, you can see a little bit more detail popping in. So that's why I did that. It's mostly just for that small minor detail. Just brings it out a bit more, and you can increase the strength of that and get it a little bit more of it. Um, but and then down here, you'll see a lot more of those rocks popping in. So that's a good little detail to add afterwards, um, especially if you want some really rocky stuff. Um, I'm going to decrease this to maybe thirty percent. That's a bit too much. Uh, thirty percent probably wasn't enough, but we'll keep it there. So let's pin this as underlay. Boom. And let's go back and look at our final color map. I've got a little desktop robot, uh, so you'll probably hear him make noise. He likes to start up and do random things every once in a while. Uh, he rolls around on, a, on like tank wheels, and he's actually pretty fun, but I'm just killing time to let this build. <laughs> he's a cool little thing. He's, it's, he's, uh, it's called Vector. Um, the company that made him, I suppose, uh, made a different one called Cosmo, which is really good for kids if you want them to get into like basic coding and development. It's a good way to start. But they went out of business and then came back. And so they, it's a little bit weird on how they handle things, but they're still pretty fun to use. Even to get Cosmo, though, Vector is useless <laughs> nowadays because they, they went out of business and lost a lot of. Uh, uh, everything that he did, he had to contact their cloud 
to like all the voice commands and stuff that you can do with them. You had to contact the cloud, which is dumb. Uh, but Cosmo works regardless of that. So if you look up Cosmo or Vector, that would be what you uh, you want to get Cosmo. Vector was cool when when he worked more. He still does his own thing. All right. So anyways, uh, just killing time. You can see all the rocks there, and then this is actually a pretty decent shot right here. Uh, you can add some atmosphere to this. So let's do some aerial perspective here. Maybe not that much. Oh, we got maybe need a little bit more. Uh, there we go. So we have our atmosphere here. Um, and then you can add a light node and light it up, or you can export it and render it in a different program. But anyways, that is the result that you'll get following the process that I just showed you. We have these nice uh, crusty rock alcoves right here, which will look good from a distance. Or you can even import some like mega scan rocks or cliff um, assets and place them in these areas and have some really cool looking rocky areas. Uh, but overall, this is actually a half decent way of making some really rocky mountains uh, that have true to form rocky outcrops. It, it's not, it's still not like vector displacement or anything like that. You're not getting cliffs for following this. You're never going to get that in a height based height map based application. Um, you're going to have to have a whole different kind of style of doing things to get those, but this is not bad for a start. Um, and if you look at the 2D map here, we'll just do it as, uh, uh, let's look at, not this one, let's look at this one. You can see here, the height map itself is actually really nice and detailed. So um, when you're looking at a height map, so this is just like a word of thumb. When you're working with height maps, you want to get closer to realism than not. So uh, even if you think you can fix that in post or in whatever 3D application you're going to, you want it to get you want to get as close as you possibly can first before you do anything in post. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with headaches. Uh, and that's been true for a very long time. And that's just not my opinion. And that's opinion of a lot of people in the industry. So try to get your height map to look as good as possible before you export it. And then uh, at that point, you, you're doing a lot less finer tunes to it in other applications. And that will just make your life a lot easier. So anyways, uh, this height map looks good. I don't know if I necessarily like the bottom parts down here personally, but I mean, it, it's, they're not terrible. So um, if you want to see some inspiration of why I started looking into this, let me pull up some images real quick. So in the Discord, uh, in the inspirational uh, chat, I posted images from Battlefield 1, one of my favorite Battlefield games. Um, but inspiration for this came from these images that I took out of the game. Uh, so this are the Dolomites, I believe is what they call them in Italy. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Um, but these are, I can't remember what this map is in the game, but they have these like mountain uh, features in it. Um, so there's that one. And then there's this one right there. Um, and then this one. And they're obviously here, they're using 3D assets to create these. They're not using height maps, so they get a lot better like cliff edges and cliff faces than what you would get from a height map. But this was the inspiration for that. Um, and it was a long time coming, so it's been a lot of trial and error inside of Gaia for it. Um, additionally, there's some other things as well. These right here. So this is what Semi posted from... We're playing around with NVIDIA's like randomization image thing. Uh, this one gave me some inspiration for it as well. Uh, and there's been a whole lot of other ones. Uh, right here we have Dark Mist. He posted some really good ones. Uh, this was one that while I was trying to put together this video or this process, um, I was making a lot of this. So Dark Mist uh, or Mists. Dark myths <laughs> i have a hard time saying that for some reason um he, he provided some pretty good uh inspiration for it as well because i was getting a lot of this kind of setup uh, and a lot of this as well uh and this so 
lots of rocks everywhere is what I was getting. And then I was like, well, I need to f kind of fine tune that and make it a little bit more spiky. And that's what we ended up with right here. Um, lots of good inspirational images in the Discord. I recommend joining it if you haven't already. It will be in the link tree, link that's in the description. Lots of good stuff in there. Um, we have a lot of people who post really good images for inspiration. Uh, even right here, he, he posted more. Um, this one right here, I, I made a... That was a major like effect that I was making trying to fine-tune this method. Um, so on and so forth. So... Uh, if you guys want to join the Discord, please do. Uh, no obligation. Uh, a lot of people have joined recently. We, we often talk and uh, post things for each other, um, ask questions, show off work, request like feedback, things like that. So if you're one of those people that want to get some feedback on what they're working on, this Discord's a good place to go to. Um, and other than that, there's not much else to say. So if you guys enjoyed the video, um, please come back for the next one. Other than that, um, I'll see you in the next video.